Hey, what's up guys? Been a long time since I made a video, so thought I would just just make a quick video here just showing you some of the Shelby's and uh, Mustangs that I've just got recently. Um, I mean, I can show you, you know, the rest of them that are all over there. And then there's the three spots where, where these guys go, but just wanted to show uh, just these off a little bit. Um, this is by Auto Art. So this is a Shelby GT350R. Got this a while back, but just haven't been in the mood to make any videos, but sitting here bored. So I thought maybe, you know, make a quick video and show you guys some of the stuff. Cause I know normally my stuff uh, is primarily Porsches and stuff, but I owned a Mustang for like 15 years and you know, love them, love the whole Shelby story and stuff. So I thought I'd start getting back into it. So the problem is, as most of you guys know, you buy one and then two, and then it turns into 25 within the last three months, um, which is kind of crazy. So yeah, I gotta, gotta slow it down a little bit, but happy to have all these back because I did have them at one point and then you sell them and then you end up buying them back and Anyways, you guys know what I'm talking about. So, uh, and then this here is the uh, GT Spirit uh, 4GT Heritage Edition from the 1966 uh, 24 Hours of Le Mans win with Chris Amon and Bruce McLaren as the drivers. Controversial win because... Most of you guys probably watched the Ford vs. Ferrari um, movie. But yeah, if you didn't really know um, that story before the movie came out, yeah, so many people will argue who actually won. And first, this car had tire problems in the beginning of the race and got like really far behind. And then by morning was actually in the lead. And then the E sign came out for them to kind of slow down. And then Ken Miles ended up catching them and taking the lead. And then he was in the lead. Some people say it's 40 seconds. Some people say it's four minutes. Long story short, he had to also slow down to get that photo finish and ended up getting, I guess, robbed of the victory because they came in together. They were having a dead heat, but the officials wouldn't allow that. So many of you guys know the story. Anyways, they both finished together, but because this car the original one anyways, the Mark II and 66, um, started about eight meters behind the Ken Miles, Denny Hume car, um, was declared the winner. So just wanted to get the, the heritage edition cause I really like this color contrast. It looks pretty sick. So that's why I got this thing. And then I got a GT spirit 2020 GT 500. I don't know if I'm really a fan of the twister orange. It's, um, it's okay. I, I don't know. I think I would prefer maybe the blue with the white stripes, but just wanted to get one of these. Auto Art doesn't make it yet. They probably will down the road because sometimes they're a little bit slow in coming out with new things. But anyways, it's pretty cool. So there are those three. But since I showed you over here, I might as well just go through these quickly as well. Um, so we have the Auto Art 68 Mustang GT Bullet from the movie Bullet with Steve McQueen. Then we have uh, 67 GT500, Eleanor from Gone in 60 Seconds. And we got some other auto arts here, the 2001 Bullet, 2003 Mach 1, and the 2000 Cobra R. And then we have the Austin Martin DBR1, that Carol Shelby won 24 Hours of Le Mans, 1959. I guess kind of the, the pinnacle of his career, winning Le Mans. And then, these are by Shelby Collectibles, by the way. The 427 Cobra. And we got the Daytona Coupe. And then we got Ken Miles, Mark II that most people know from the movie Ford vs. Ferrari. And then we got one of the G2 
GT 350Rs from 65, only 37 of them were made. Real cars anyways, back in 65, they only made 37 of them. And then we go down to the exact detail. It's a 67 GT 500. These are great, good quality. Engine compartment, interior, everything looks great on them. And we got a 68 GT 500 KR. We got the 69 GT 500 convertible. Never was a huge fan of this body style, but this is when the whole Shelby stuff was being phased out anyways. There were actually no 60, 69 was actually the last year of production. They did sell them in 1970, but those were just leftover 69 models um, that got like a little bit, you see those, you see on the hood where that ducting is, they would paint that area black to almost make it look like it was some kind of stripes on the hood and they would sell them off as uh, as 1970s, but there were actually no production in 1970s. They were left over 69s. Uh, and then this is what sort of regenerated the whole relationship with uh, Ford and Shelby. Um, 2004 Auto Show. They released um, the Ford GT and the Cobra Concept. And this is what kind of got the whole relationship back between Ford and Shelby. And uh, yeah, they started producing the Ford GT and as a production car in 2005, 2006. Amazing, looks so much like the original. It's, uh, it's crazy, beautiful car. And then we got the Shelby GT Hertz. We got the convertible. Um, again, this was the 40th anniversary of um, of the Hertz program um, in 2006. They released the Hertz program again to kind of introduce, you know, the Mustangs uh, with Shelby being relaunched and the GT500 coming out. So this is the rental car from 2007. There were only 500 convertibles made for 2007. In 2006, they were only coupes. And I think, yeah, there were about a thousand of those. So 500 convertibles for 2007 and 1,000 um, coupes for 2006. And then we have the 40th anniversary GT500 by Hot Wheels Elite. So yeah, anyways guys, just wanted to show you the new cars in the collection. I know most guys do them individually and show them off one at a time, but I just thought, you know what, we'll just kind of give you an overview of everything that I got recently, which is quite a lot, but that's how it goes. Once you get started, it's kind of hard because you keep finding more and before you know it, there's 25 new cars that you have to make room for and uh, that's it so anyways guys thanks for watching